so you see what I was talking about. <laughs> Please be seated. And our mission team will speak to us about their experience in South Carolina, so thank you. Preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. This was my fifth year on the mission trip. Most of those years I've served as their photographer. And every year when I come back, I can't find the words to explain why the week was so special. Finally, I found a phrase that sums it up perfectly. On the mission trip this week, our youth group preached the gospel through their actions, which is the best way to do it. I would like to share three specific verses that were cycling through my mind this week and explain how the youth group preached those verses through their actions. The first is from Deuteronomy. In a speech Moses gave to the Israelites just before his death, he said, There will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy, and to the poor in your land. For 42 years, the Rural Missions Organization in South Carolina has been providing help to the poor. Although the work we complete during our annual mission trip is only a tiny piece of their story, it makes a never-ending difference in the lives of the individuals that we serve. At the end of the week, we always wish that we could have done more, but I've learned that whatever we accomplish in that one week is enough to give them the hope to keep going. When we leave there, whether we completed a week-long project or a piece of a longer project, the people we worked for will always remember the group of joyful, loving young adults that came to help them. This gives them the boost they need to take pride in their lives and their homes once again and to continue the work that we began. Chris Working shared with the group that one day this week while we were on the work site, he visited a trailer that we worked on two years ago for a woman named Miss Tomlin. When we began our work at that trailer, it was completely missing a couple of windows, had mold growing in the bathroom, and in many places had nothing but bare plywood on the floor. Our group did some work on the exterior and replaced the windows, and other groups came in the following weeks to do interior work and donate new flooring and appliances. When Chris visited the home last week, which is two years after we had been there, it was still in immaculate condition. The resident didn't even know that Chris was coming to visit, but the inside and the outside of the trailer was spotless, and it was adorned with decorations and pictures of her family. It was completely transformed from what we saw two years ago. I know that the work that our youth group did for Vernon and his mother this week will stay in their hearts just like it did for Ms. Tomlin, and it'll make a lasting impact on their lives. This is why, like Moses said, we must continue to reach out and care for the poor, even if it seems like we can never do enough. The second verse is from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus sent out his disciples, he gave them the instructions, freely you have received, freely give. The students on this trip were clearly following this instruction from Jesus. They got up early each morning and excitedly went out into the hot, sticky South Carolina weather to do intense work. Although it was hot and they were tired and they were not always assigned the most glamorous tasks, they never complained. Even though they might not have known it at the time, I know that they were motivated by God's gentle words in their hearts, telling them that they were doing the right thing and that they were doing his work. The fact that these young adults already have a connection with God in their lives and that they continue to grow in their faith brings me a lot of hope for the future of this world. This is a group of young people who are willing to freely give to others as Jesus intended. The last verse is also from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus told his disciples, you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. When this group of students gets together, it truly feels like I am with the light of the world. They're so full of joy and love that it spreads to everyone who's around them. And when they're together in a group, the light just shines even brighter. 
As I was talking with my husband, Selden, on the last night of the trip, I shared with him that I feel more joy during this week of the year than any other. I feel so free to be myself, and I feel like this group of students gets me more than anyone else. I think that the love and the joy in this group, especially during the week of the mission trip, comes from God smiling upon these students and being so proud of his children. As Selden and I move on in a new chapter of our lives, I'm certain that being part of this youth group in this mission trip has had a large part in directing our future and will stay with us forever. I thank all the students and the St. James community for the huge impact you've had in our lives. And I encourage everyone to become a part of it in any way that you can, because, because it is one way that I know for sure that God is using his children to preach the gospel. Hello, my name is Max Elsignor. I am a 15-year-old uh, sophomore at Ketteron. I have been going to St. James my whole life, and this was my first mission trip ever. Both of my sisters, however, did go on the um, mission trip for all four years. Um, every time they came back, they told me that I, I should go when I, when I was able to, and it was a great trip. Um, in the beginning of the week, I started at the uh, house that everybody was starting to build on, Vernon's house. And I slowly got to know Vernon better through uh, going, just meet, shaking his hand. And then when I saw him at the seafood jamboree where he sang, and he had a, just a beautiful voice. He always wore this cross on his neck that um, just symbolized how faithful he was. Um, we started building his house, and then I was just painting, and you know, I'm not that great of a painter. <laughs> um, so they put me on another job, where right, <laughs> it was this place right behind the church, and um, it was roofing. So I thought, you know, maybe I'd be better at this. Well, I really wasn't. <laughs> at, first, at first, I couldn't really hammer too well, and then, so, Everybody was trying to teach me, and they all encouraged me to, that by the end of the week, I'd be, I'd be the same as they were. But well, by the end of the next day, I was already like, just like them. That encouragement was the reason that I'm going to go next year. The, peop the, strangers that, the people that I call strangers in the beginning are now my friends. But at the end of that trip, I was like, I was like I was already there before. I already knew everybody. I was, it was just so emotional. And it was just so loving. Um, that roof was hot too. I mean, <laughs> we had to get that roof done quick. Um, I just, I think God put me on that roof though, because that's, I needed those friends that, they, I just needed them, and I think that's why God put me on that roof. And I'd like to thank all the um, people who contributed to my, my trip by doing, uh, contributing to the Rockathon for me. And um, uh, you guys were in my prayers, and I hope I'm in yours. Um, my name is Kaylee, and I will be a senior at Falkier in the fall. And unlike Mark, I have not gone to St. James all my life. I've actually just recently joined the youth group within the course of the last year or so, and it's easily been one of the best decisions of my life. This is such an amazing group, and it's a blessing knowing every single one of them. Um, and through this youth group, I've really learned the power of love and acceptance, and that family is more than just who you're related to. On our last night together, we went around the room sharing moments that really stood out to us and our personal God moments throughout the week. That being said, I'd like to take this time to share a few of mine with you guys. The first being when we arrived at Hanover to pick up the youth group at St. Paul's. Although I knew absolutely none of them, everyone was great towards me. 
And seeing the rest of the youth group who haven't seen this group in a year get just load off the bus and immediately their hugs, everyone was acting like they had just seen each other the day before. And it was a really cool thing to see. And by the end of the week, I was one of those people laughing and hugging with everyone and acting like I had known this group of kids all my life when really it had been seven, probably seven quickest days of my life. Um, and I know that I'll carry these people with me for the rest of my life, and it was just really amazing. Um, my second truly inspiring and mind-blowing experience happened on Sunday. So leading up to the trip, everyone was asking millions and millions of questions, like, why are you going on this trip? What are you hoping to get from this? And most importantly, how is this trip going to affect your story, your personal experience and story with God? And before going on this trip, I really didn't have answers to many of those. I wasn't sure. I knew I wanted to be on this trip. I felt called to be on it, this group of people. But I really didn't know exactly what my purpose here was going to be. How could I make a difference? Um, and one of our the scripture we put on the back of our shirts this year was, um, it's from, it was, this is the moment for what you have been created, and it's from the Gospel of Esther. Um, I don't remember exactly which passage. 414. <laughs> um, but so on, we spent the day on Sunday in Charleston, and the first thing we did was we get down there, we load off the bus, and immediately Selden, Chris, and all, um, Ryan, all of our leaders gather us up together and say, okay, guys, we're going to go to the AME church, the one that recently had the shootings. And I was a little nervous. I turned to my friend Sammy. I was like, well, do you know what to expect from this? She's like, mm -mm. <laughs> So I really wasn't sure. I felt going up to the church, I felt, who am I to be here? What, like, I almost felt like I was trespassing. Like, I don't have, I shouldn't be here right now. This is a sacred place for them. They need to deal with this. But Immediately that feeling was washed away. We walk up to the church as a group and it was just, there's hundreds and thousands of flowers and wreaths and tourists everywhere and it's, it was crazy. Um, but we're there and we're all kind of just sitting around. I think we're all kind of solemn taking it in. Um, but the love and support was crazy and immediately, or not immediately, but we see people start kind of walking up to the church, like walking inside and what? Um, so we start, our leaders start going in there, and the people, the greeters outside, the ushers, they immediately were, please, come in our church, please join us. And it was amazing. And as soon as we stepped into that church, the, the most undescribable feeling of peace and love washed over us. These people who didn't know us from anywhere opened their arms and welcomed us to their church in this time of tragedy and mourning for them, yet they opened up to us and said, please, come pray with us, be a part of us. And that was, that was, that's why we're here. We're here to expand our story and touch other, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and we all went in this church and we sat in the pews and it was beautiful. The stained glass, light was pouring in, it was quiet, everyone was, it wasn't awkward quiet, it was just the love was, you, feel, you can almost feel the prayers in the room and this community coming together was the most indescribable feeling. I will never forget it. Um, and I think that was definitely my favorite part and just everyone coming together. And that was a lot of people throughout the week just said that it really touched them. So I think I was just really blessed to be a part of that. And I just want to thank everyone who helped not only me, but our whole youth group go on this trip and experience this. And I can't wait for next year. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm Patrick Tenor. I'm going to be a junior at Kettle Run. And like Max, I've been going to this church my whole life. I've been serving, but I have not really been going to many of the YMO meetings or any of that kind of stuff. So for about four or five months now, I've just been nagged and nagged <laughs> and nagged. <laughs> by Chris and Selden and my parents and my older brother and sister who both went on the trip. So I decided, you know, 
why not just go and if you don't like it you don't have to go again <laughs> I definitely want to go again <laughs> just after one day being with these people you could already feel the connection and the love that you had for everyone really first day on the work site I had my hammer my nails I'm ready to you know build something and they're like okay you're gonna go to painting I was really disappointed <laughs> unlike Max who's doing like the railings and the steps I had to kneel down and get all the cinder blocks on the bottom of the house and it was extremely uncomfortable <laughs> I was bad at it <laughs> so like Max after a couple days I got moved to roofing as well and that was probably the best thing that could have happened he was not lying it was super it was just really really hot <laughs> hundred degree heat uh, you know just tearing off the shingles ripping out all the nails and the rotten plywood putting all the ply all the new plywood back on the roof and then putting the paper over the plywood to put the shingles in by Friday we got it done and we were just looking at it we're like whoa you know seven teenagers and a few adults and we just finished it an entire roof pretty much and just by the by the end of that experience those people that I worked with I wouldn't really call them much of friends I'd call them closer to my family now I just got to know them extremely well and it was something I'll never forget and I felt the same about everyone else on the trip but one moment that really stood out to me was Friday, I mean Thursday night. <laughs> we all went to the pool and we were just having a fun time, you know, in the pool, chilling. Then we had dinner and it was a lot of fun. And then it got serious. We had an intense water polo match. And there were elbows thrown, <laughs> a couple of knocks to the face with the volleyball. <laughs> Not to brag or anything, but my team won 8-2, to two, no big deal. <laughs> huh? <laughs> but just even after all the elbows being thrown, you know, dunking people in the water, you just began to love all those people that you were playing with. And by the end of the trip, when people from Hanover got off the bus, you didn't want them to get off the bus and leave. You want to just head back and start on a different project pretty much. Because you just had most the best time of your life. There's a just really, you know, life changing experience and what Sammy told me is the first few days after coming home you get the post mission depression <laughs> where you just kinda you know, you're in your room, and then you look around, and there's no one there, and you're just like, oh, this kind of stinks. And you're so used to being around people that when you have something like come in your mind, like an idea, you can just turn to someone and say something, and then you're going to be in your living room, and you're like, oh. <laughs> but it was a really great experience, and I can't wait to go again next year, and just great, and just make great you know relationship to these people <laughs> thank you all very much uh, and this is more than just a uh, a work trip this is a, a, a trip where uh, they break into small groups where uh, they're counted on to be leaders uh, where they have a theme and, and they shape the week around reflecting on that theme. Uh, the theme was their stories and how their stories were intersecting with stories of, uh, of the people in South Carolina. Uh, and all of that was enveloped into God's story. Uh, and, now, and now it's part of your story. Uh, and we took you all down there with us so that all of our stories are now woven together. Um, and one of the things, uh, as we learned about other people's stories, uh, that we learned that uh, outside our tradition, people get a little bit more animated. Um, and we learned that uh, Alleluia doesn't sound like Alleluia. Uh, how does Alleluia sound on three? One, two, three. Alleluia! 
Absolutely. So, Alleluia and Amen. Thank you all very much.